One thing I've noticed in teaching circuit analysis is that students have a very hard time figuring out how to adequately trigger on an oscilloscope. As I turn on my function generator, I see a sinusoidal source on my oscilloscope, but it isn't staying in one place. To solve this, there are two possibilities. The first possibility is that the triggering level is set incorrectly. The other possibility is that this is just set on the wrong channel. We can look at the left-hand side of the screen on the oscilloscope. The flag labeled T, which is on the top, is purple, indicating that triggering is set to channel 2. Channel 2 is not being used on this oscilloscope. We need to change the channel to channel 1. If I go into the triggering menu, I see that the source is set on channel 2. I can go in and set the channel to be channel 1. And now, magically, my oscilloscope is able to trigger. It's possible that we're triggering on the correct channel, but our trigger level is set incorrectly. Take a look at this triangular wave. If we look, the trigger level is set to a voltage much higher than the maximum of the signal. We want our trigger level to be somewhere between the minimum and maximum signals of this signal. Simply take the trigger level button and dial it down to a level that is in between the minimum and maximum. Whatever level we choose is going to be set to the zero part of the time axis. Something else we might need to do is measure an RC or RL time constant. I have a circuit wired up with a square wave input and an RC signal on the output. I may want to measure either the charging or discharging time constant. To set the triggering level, we need to make sure that it's between the minimum and maximum voltages. Right now it's set to channel 1, and by putting it into a good range, we can get a nice still signal. This is a charging constant as I can see that the signal is going from a small value to a larger value on the output. What if I want to measure the discharging constant? In that case, I need to change the triggering characteristics of this wave. I'm going to use channel 1 because it has a nice sharp transition from low voltage to high voltage. But instead of looking at a rising edge, I'd like to look at a falling edge. Go to the trigger menu and change the slope to a falling edge. There's one final possibility that may be very useful to us. It's possible that if I were to use a single source event, such as a push button or a toggle switch to trigger a one-time event, that it would be very difficult for me to adequately trigger and capture just that one signal. In that case, we can use a single trigger. In the trigger menu, select that you want to have single. In this case, the next time the signal on the source that we've selected has a falling edge in this case because that's what we've selected through a trigger level set by this knob, that single event will be captured and held onto the screen until we are done.